Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a super special video because we are kicking off a whole new video series looking at optimizing the snot out of one of these little guys. This is a tiny whoop and in this video series we are going to be looking at every part of the drivetrain of this little guy. We're going to be testing props, motors and ESCs to get the maximum possible performance whether you're looking to fly for the longest time or just, just go as fast as possible and beat everyone else around the track. In the next video, I'm going to be testing just a few Tiny Whoop motors. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video when it comes out. But today we are going to be starting with the easiest thing that you can do to get way more performance out of your Tiny Whoop. You don't have to change any parts, don't have to change motors, don't have to change props. All you have to do is optimize your ESC settings. You can do this today, you can do this right now, and you're going to get a whole heap more performance for almost no effort. So let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it and get those ESC settings perfectly dialed in. If you've been following the channel recently, you might have seen that I'm wearing some awesome new drone themed t-shirts. I've been working with an amazing designer to create some bold, bright graphics capturing my favorite moments in FPV. Right now we're launching four designs, the Drift Chase, Mid-Air Motocross, One Pack Bando Rip, and the Mountain Dive. You can get these graphics as a high quality print on a t-shirt or jumper like I'm wearing, or you can get them as a tote bag, notebook, sticker, or a face mask. Check out the links down in the video description. Before we dive into the test results, let me take you through the test setup, which is slightly different from that that I've used for larger motors and props. Here we have the tiny little 0802 motor and prop connected to the test stand. Obviously the motor is far too small to mount directly so I've 3D printed this adapter which stands the motor off a bit and gives the prop clean air to work with. The motor is connected to this piece of race wire and all the motors have the same length wires for this uh, section here and that's important because these wires are very thin. The race wire is for a 5 inch drone so it's got massive current carrying capability and I've connected to it with these thick 20 AWG motor wires and that's running back to the ESC. The ESC is a BL Heli S ESC with a 7 amp rating and it's flashed to the BlueJ firmware so that we have all the data from bidirectional D-Shot that we need to record the performance of the motor. The ESC is connected to another piece of race wire which adapts it to these thick wires which go to the test stand and that's so that we can measure the voltage and the current that we're supplying to the ESC during the test. The test stand has this massive 50 volt 10,000 microfarad capacitor and there's another smaller capacitor on the ESC. But in parallel with all of that, I've also connected this Nubidrone Nitro Nitro Gold battery to help keep the supply voltage to the ESC very constant at four volts. All of this setup is kept topped up to four volts by a power supply with a five amp rating, which is plenty to hold everything constant during the test. The ESC is connected to this flight controller and that flight controller is going to log all of the data over bidirectional D-Shot from the ESC so that we can measure the responsiveness of the motor and the RPM that the motor achieves under all of the different test conditions. Now that we've looked at the test equipment, I want to run you quickly through the methodology, starting with the KV test. Here we ramp the motor from 0 to 100% throttle at 3 volts with no prop, and we measure the full throttle RPM of the motor at 3 volts. Dividing that by three gives us a measure of the motor KV, and this might be slightly different to the manufacturer's KV, but it is still comparable between different tests. The second test is a throttle ramp. Here we put a prop on the motor and ramp the motor to full throttle over five seconds and then back down again. Here we can see the shape of the thrust curve and we can also see the full throttle RPM, which is a measure of the full throttle thrust that the motor is able to achieve. The next test is a response test. Here we're stepping the motor from 10 to 50% throttle and back again multiple times and we're measuring how fast the motor is able to accelerate and decelerate the prop. The final test is an efficiency test. Here we drive the motor at 1 amp of current giving it exactly 4 watts and we measure the RPM that the motor is able to achieve. A higher RPM means more thrust for the same power and that means better efficiency. All right then, let's dive into some data. And we're gonna start by talking about motor timing. Motor timing is how the ESC controls when it drives a coil relative to the position of the magnet in the rotor. If you've got a coil here and a magnet in the rotor that is spinning and passing by the coil, motor timing controls when the ESC will turn on this coil 
to push the magnet round. If you have a timing of zero degrees, the ESC will drive the coil when the magnet is directly opposite the end of the coil. If you have positive timing, let's say 15 degrees, that means that the ESC will drive the coil slightly before the magnet arrives directly opposite it, and that gives time for current and therefore magnetic field to build up in the, in the windings, in the coil, and that allows the coil to push the magnet past. If you have too little timing, you run the risk of desyncs, and too much timing, you actually have the coil pushing back against the magnet, trying to stop the motor spinning before um, the magnet passes the end of the coil and pushes on. So too much or too little timing can be a problem. Let's start by looking at timing versus motor KV. And motor KV is incredibly important for tiny whip motors. The higher the motor KV, the more top end power you're gonna have. And the effective motor KV is affected by the ESC timing setting. What we can see is that increasing the motor timing gives an improvement in terms of KV. It raises the KV, that's gonna give you more top end power but we don't see any improvement beyond 15 degrees of timing. So going to 22 and a half or even 30 degrees doesn't give you any benefit over 15, but you do see a big loss, a big deficit in lower timings, seven and a half and zero degrees, giving you significantly less top end power. If we look at a 10 second ramp from zero to full throttle and back again, we can see that the low timings really have significant reduction in the top end motor RPM and therefore the top end thrust that you're getting from the motor. But 15, 22 and a half and 30 degrees of timing all give you the same maximum RPM and therefore the same maximum thrust. And there's no benefit to increasing timing beyond 15 degrees. Looking at efficiency now, we can measure efficiency by driving the motor at one amp of current and four volts. So we're giving the motor exactly four watts. And then we can look at the RPM that it's able to achieve. If the motor is achieving a higher RPM and therefore delivering more thrust at the same power level, we know that it's being more efficient. Again, we see a benefit of increasing timing up to 15 degrees. Increasing the timing is increasing the motor RPM that's able to be achieved at that one amp of current, that four watts of power. And so you're getting more thrust for the same power and the motor is being more efficient. However, once you get beyond 15 degrees, the, um, the improvement starts to go back the other way. We see there's actually less efficiency at 22 and a half and 30 degrees of timing compared to what we get at 15 degrees. So the efficiency is reducing and we're not getting any more top end power. So there's no benefit to going beyond 15 degrees and there is a clear peak in efficiency at 15 degrees of timing. Looking at ESC timing versus responsiveness, we can see clearly that there's no effect here. The motor accelerates and decelerates just as fast regardless of the ESC timing setting. This data gives us a clear recommendation on motor timing. 15 degrees of timing is ideal for Blue Jay ESCs running these very small motors. A timing setting lower or higher than 15 degrees reduces both the performance of the motor and its efficiency. Now let's move on and look at ramp up power. I tested a whole range of different ramp up powers and overall I saw very little effect from this setting. There was no difference in motor deceleration for any of the ramp up power settings that I tried, whether it was one times all the way up to 13 times or even turning ramp up power off completely. When we look at motor acceleration, there was a small effect. If I set ramp up power all the way down at one times, then that did slow the acceleration of the motor, but all of the other settings the motor achieved its maximum acceleration. So in general, provided that you aren't setting ramp up power at one times, um, you can pretty much just leave this setting alone and the default is probably absolutely fine for these tiny motors. If you're looking to make the most of your tiny whoop, you won't want to miss out on my PDF tuning guides for Betaflight 4.5 and Blue Jay ESCs that are now available on my Patreon. These guides will take you step by step through everything you need to know to get your tiny whoop tuned to perfection and flying better than it ever has before. You can't get these resources anywhere else. And not only that, you'll be supporting me to make more videos like this for everyone in the FPV community. I'd really appreciate it if you check out those links down in the video description. Now let's talk about PWM frequency, because this has a huge effect on the tiny motors we use on our whoops. PWM frequency controls how fast the ESC switches power on and off to the coil whenever you're at less than full throttle. So if you're at 50% throttle, the ESC is very quickly switching the coil on and off, and it's spending half the time on and half the time off to give you 50% throttle. 
PWM frequency controls how fast that switching occurs, and there are three settings, 24 kilohertz, so 24,000 times a second, 48K, and 96 kilohertz. Let's start by looking at the effect on motor KV. And PWM frequency doesn't have any effect on motor KV, because motor KV is measured at full throttle, which means that the ESC isn't switching. When you have uh, the motor at full throttle, each coil is just driven 100% of the time, and so the ESC never switches. And as we would expect, that means that we get exactly the same motor KV within the margin of error, regardless of the PWM frequency setting. The moment you start to look at less than full throttle, everything changes, because now we are switching power to the coil, and so the PWM frequency setting is in effect. And increasing the PWM frequency actually decreases the thrust at low and mid throttle, but once you get up to full throttle, obviously that thrust is the same across all the PWM frequency settings because we're no longer switching. This gives a different shape to the throttle curve for the higher PWM frequencies with a sort of a lower throttle curve initially that then ramps up more quickly as you get closer to full throttle. Now, this shape of the throttle curve could be a little bit different to what you're used to, but don't worry because we can compensate for it using Throttle Expo. I've crunched the numbers on this and I found that if you're moving from 24 or 48K PWM up to 96K PWM and you want to have the same shape of the throttle curve, so you want to best match a linear throttle curve at 24 or 48K PWM, if you set throttle mid to 1.0 and throttle expo to 0.25, that will effectively correct the shape of the throttle curve for you and match what you had before when you were at 24 or 48K PWM. And this might be really useful because I think you're going to want to consider changing to 96K PWM. It turns out that PWM frequency has a huge effect on the efficiency of these tiny motors that we use on our whoops. If you move from 24K PWM up to 48K PWM, then you can get an increase of nearly 25% in terms of RPM at the prop when you're driving the motor at a constant current of one amp and a voltage of four volts. That increase of 25% RPM is more like 55% increase in thrust because thrust is proportional to the square of motor RPM. Moving from 48K to 96K, the difference is a bit smaller. We get an increase of about 8% in terms of RPM, and that's maybe 17% increase in terms of thrust. But that is still very, very much worth having. It's, it's gonna allow you to fly for longer, and if you're a racer, it's gonna allow you to be at higher throttle for more of the time, and that's gonna allow you to race faster, to fly faster for longer. I should be clear though that this efficiency improvement is only seen at partial throttle. If you are always close to or at full throttle, you won't see any efficiency difference between the different PWM settings. But if you're cruising around with an average of 30 to 50% throttle, you are gonna see a huge improvement from these higher PWM frequencies. Unfortunately, it's not all good news with higher PWM frequencies. Higher PWM doesn't really have an effect on motor acceleration. Once you take into account the fact that obviously you're accelerating to a slightly different RPM at higher PWM frequencies, the actual acceleration rate of the motor is pretty similar, whether you're running at 24K or 96K PWM. But when we're looking at motor deceleration, that higher PWM frequency does significantly slow how fast the motor is able to be decelerated by the ESC. So motor braking is less effective at that higher PWM frequency. But you know, we're only talking about maybe 10, 20 milliseconds from a 50% to 10% throttle deceleration. And overall, I think the massive gains in efficiency that you get from those higher PWM frequencies are probably worthwhile, even if you do lose a little, a little bit of motor braking performance. All right, so now that we've found the best settings, I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through applying these to your ESC. So I've got my tiny whoop here, and I'm gonna plug it into my computer over USB. I'm also going to plug in a battery to power up the ESC as well. There we go, all powered up. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to escconfigurator.com, open the port selection, select the Betaflight STM32 COM port, hit connect, and then hit the big green connect button. That will connect to the flight controller, and if we hit read settings, we can get all the settings for the ESCs on our tiny whoop. So we can see that we've got the settings coming up here. 
The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to flash all the ESCs with the latest version of BlueJ and select the 96 kilohertz PWM option. So jump into flash all ESCs. Then we've got the firmware is going to be BlueJ. We're going to leave the ESC selection as it is because that's going to auto populate. And we don't want to change it. And we're going to select the latest version, version 21 and 96 K PWM. Once we've done all that, just hit flash. And then over a few seconds, all of the ESCs on your tiny whoop are going to be flashed to the latest version of BlueJ with 96 kilohertz PWM. Once all of the ESCs are flashed, we can apply the recommended settings. So first off, we are going to be turning up this minimum startup power. That needs to be set to the maximum value for these tiny little motors to make sure they start reliably. Similarly, the maximum startup power, we can increase that up to the maximum value as well. That's going to be absolutely fine. For motor timing, we found that 15 degrees was the optimum, so we're going to set that and leave DMAG compensation at low. For RPM power protection, I mean, you can leave this at default, but I always like to have it at the lowest value where it doesn't limit motor acceleration to minimize the chance of power spikes. So for me, I'm going to set that down to three times, and that should give me a fast ramp up, so fast acceleration of the motor, but avoid large power spikes large power spikes which might reduce my efficiency. Everything else can pretty much be left exactly as it's set. The only difference being uh, the ESC power rating. If you have a board that's only for 1S, then you can set this to 1S. If you have a board that's for 1 to 2S, then you're going to set this to 2S+. plus. The board I have is a 1 to 2S board, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Once you've done all of those changes, just hit right settings and that is going to overwrite all of the settings on your ESC, and now you're good to go. Just changing those few ESC settings is going to greatly improve the flight performance of your Tiny Whoop. But it's not the only thing we need to adjust. We also need to look at the motors and props that are available for these Tiny Drones in order to get the ultimate setup for the best possible flight performance. And that's what we're going to be doing in future videos. So make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you see my motor testing and prop testing videos for Tiny Whoops as soon as they come out. And follow along with me as we find the ultimate combination of components for your next Tiny Whoop build. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy flying.